Hello and welcome to the All Rookie Podcast. Today is June 15th, 2022, and I'm your host, William Harris, aka William Is Bill. Great to be back with you today on another episode of the All Rookie Podcast. Today, I'm going to be covering my top international prospects. You know, this was a very popular show last year, so I had to bring it back this year. And I'm going to give you my top 10 international prospects. And first, you know, there was a deadline for withdrawing from the draft, mainly from international prospects or prospects that will not return to college and will go pro, whether it's G League Ignite or overseas. And I'm going to name you some notable guys that opted out of the draft. First, Leonard Miller. He was a very talented high school prospect who could have decided to make that jump to the NBA for whatever reason. I don't know. Kind of he was in the same type of situation as Shaden Sharp. He did not perform well at the combine. He does not look ready. So it was a wise decision for him to not enter into this NBA draft because more than likely he'd be in the G League anyway. And so instead, he signed to play in the G League Ignite team, and that's going to help his draft prospects tremendously. So that's Leonard Miller. Um, If you were deep into this draft, (laughs) you would have known his name, and he made the wise wise decision to return to not play in the NBA, not be in the draft. Another player, Malcolm Cazalon, you know, he's a decent international player. I didn't feel he was ready. So he's going to return and not play in the be in the draft he's going to play international as well another player that opted out was carlo matkovich but at the he opted out and then at the final minute he changed his mind and said no 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 i have a change of heart again i'm going to stay in the draft so i'm a big fan of carlo matkovich um so i think it i think it would have been a wise decision for him to opt out because his draft stock is not high, but he is talented, but he chose to stay in. So maybe he got some word from someone when he said, I'm going to withdraw. And maybe he got some calls like, don't withdraw. We're going to take you at such and such pick. So we shall see. But those are the main three guys um, that opted out and one opted back in. Uh, no one else really is on the radar as being drafted that I covered. So we're going to get straight to it like there's nothing to it. My top 10 international prospects. I'm going to start off with number one. Let's just go right into it with Hugo Besson. My number one international prospect. He is the 6'6 point guard slash shooting guard, combo guard from France. He averaged 14 points, four rebounds, two and a half assists, a half steal, and per game, he's 21 years old, and he shot 30% from three-point range. Now, there was a lot of up and down with his height. You know, I've seen him listed at 6'3", 6'4", and now 6'6". Six, six. And, you know, I had to finally find his official combine size, and that was a slightly under 6'6", six, six, so pretty much 6'6". Six six. To be a point guard at that height, you know, that really puts him over the top. That puts him in elite company. To be good and 6'3 is one thing, but to be good and 6'6 as a point guard, that can get you into the first round. I have him late in the first round at this point. Most people have him early second to mid second. But to me, he has an incredible handle. He's very smooth and confident with the rock. He's lethal from three. Even though his percentage is low, he took a lot of tough shots from three. Those shots will be easier in the NBA. So when he's on and when he's open, He's going to drain that three. He's very talented. And, you know, he doesn't play like a typical international player. I mean, he gets fancy with the ball. He'll dance on you. He can hit the pull-up J, hit the step-back J, hit the floater. He has great touch in the paint, great vision. I love his passing. He sets up guys nicely. Perfect point guard to run the team. And, you know, he really – he only averaged two and a half assists per game. And you say, that's bad. I mean, it is bad. (laughs) But – he had a lot of guys that missed open shots. Even if you look at his best passes, half of them, the guys are missing wide open shots. So with the level of talent being better in the NBA, his game will translate. And fortunately, he'll have better players to deliver on the other end. But yeah, he, he drives to the paint with ease and normally makes the right decision to pass it or take it on his own. All of his skills make him NBA ready, in my opinion. He is not a project 
like many other players in this draft in general and a lot of international players in this draft. So Hugo Besson, my number one player, international player. And, you know, I have to say the top three were close, but I would have to just give it to Hugo Besson as number one. Number two is really like a 2A and 2B. It depends on what you like better, but I'm going to go with my two. My, I'll say number two, <laughs> Usman Dieng, the 6'10 forward with a seven-foot wingspan from France, averaged nine points, three boards, one assist, a half steal, and basically 0.3 blocks per game, which should be better than that. But he only shot 27% from three also and 50, 51% from two. So he is, Usman Dieng is a very long, rangy defender you know he's tall and skinny he can pass the ball he can dribble well he can even break down a defender from the perimeter and he really could be a good defender in the league but right now he is raw and he's not ready yet in my opinion you know he can shoot a good floater he can even hit the pull-up three at times and he's very confident in his shot even though his percentages were low he's not really fast I think his game it could possibly not translate. It could, it could not, but he's only 18. So a lot of people are going to love that upside. You know, it's very high upside. He's just a raw player who is a swing for the fences, in my opinion. And I don't think he will come become the player that a lot of people are expecting him to be for a few years. If he hits, he can be really good, but it's not a guarantee. So, you know, his weaknesses are scoring and rebounding. I mean, I mean, really, you could say his weaknesses are everything. <laughs> he doesn't get assists or steals or blocks either. But people love that size, 6'10", and be able to move like a small four. And, you know, people honest, obviously, first thought, Giannis. Can he be Giannis? We don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I think he has a long way to go. But it's worth the shot to draft him. But I, I'm seeing a lot of lottery talk, and I think that's a huge mistake for him to go in the lottery. He is not ready for that yet. He is overrated because of his frame, and a lot of people are going to mis, misdiagnose <laughs> Usman Dieng because they're going to try to find the next Giannis, and, it, and it's very far and few in between Giannis and Tendakopo, Scotty Barnes types. So we will see what happens. He has some talent. He's just not ready yet. Now, my number three prospect, Nikolai Jovic, much better offensive player than Usman Dieng, but I still have concerns about him for other reasons. He's a 6'11", 225-pound forward from Mega Mozart in Serbia, averaged almost 12 points per game, four and a half boards, three and a half assists, 0.6 steals, 0.4 blocks. He's 19 years old, and he shot 40% from three. So all those numbers sound great. You know, Nikolai Jovic, he plays like a guard. He's a great shooter, has a nice handle, can pull up and get his own three-point shot. You would not know he's 6'10 by the way he plays. He has a nice soft touch in the paint with the floater or the finger roll. I don't really know what position he'll play in the NBA. To be 6'11 and you play like a small forward, that's going to be interesting. He can't guard small forwards, and that's 6'11". You know, I don't know if he will be able to guard big men. So his offensive game is very intriguing, but what's he going to do in the actual NBA? Uh, he's a very good and clever passer. He can hit the spot up fadeaway, but, you know, he's definitely opposite of his namesake. He plays a lot more like Luka than Jokic, you know. So we'll, he'll probably just be a good shooter or role player in the NBA, but he's very talented. You know, like I say, he shot 40% from three, 36% from three at the World Cup. And, you know, that, that shooting will allow him to succeed. But I just, I just don't know how he will fit on any team, really. And it, it's totally, if you wish Usman Dieng had his Nikolai Jokic's offensive skill, put them together, you have the perfect player. <laughs> But we will see what happens because he's going to struggle on defense. But he is he is sneakily athletic. But I just wonder how his game will translate to the NBA. We shall see. Both guys are being projected as first-round picks or early second. And 
That's a lot higher than I have them projected. Let's just say that. I like the, they're intriguing, but there are no lottery guys in my opinion. Now, my number four guy, Gabriel Procida, my number four international prospect. Gabriel Procida from Italy. He's six foot seven, 190 pounds, average seven points, three boards, 0.7 assists, 0.8 steals, shot 38% from three. Now, you say those numbers aren't great, but he only played 18 minutes per game because when you're playing international, they are not trying to get their guy to the NBA. They're trying to win games. So they're playing a lot of older players. You know, young guys got to get in where they can fit in. But when he played, you saw that he was very athletic. He's a swing man that can shoot the ball very well from two and three. He's very nice and smooth player. Looks like a pro out there. He dunks like... I guess, I mean, I don't, he dunks like an American. He doesn't play like an international player with his athleticism. He really plays all together like a kid from America. He, you know, he even has the swagger about him, if you want to use that word, and aggression with his dunks. Very high leaper. He's fast and crafty. He, he can create his own shot. He drives to the rack very well. His low stats make him a hidden gem, in my opinion. He's a tough kid. I love his passion and aggression for the game. I felt he could have stayed if he wanted to. He might need another year of development, but he chose to stay in this draft, and uh, he could be really good. It's just going to take some time to adjust to the American game, but, you know, I love his game. I'm a fan. He has quick hands for steals as well. So, Gabriel Procida, you know, at the time when I was looking him up, he was not really on anyone's radar, but you hear his name creeping up drafts, so... He was a hidden gem. Now he just may be a gem that's out there for everyone to see. So we'll see. You know, normally if you're in the second round, most guys don't think highly of second round picks. So you take a, you take your shots. And if someone feels Gabriel Procida can be a starting shooting guard for their team or small forward in the future, he could go early second. We shall see. Now, that was number four. If you don't remember, let's start it over from the top. Hugo Besson, number one. Usman Dieng, number two. Nikola Jovic, number three. Gabriel Procida, number four. And number five, a guy that I was telling you about at the beginning of the show, Carlo Makovic, the 6'10", big man from Bosnia. Average 6.4 points per game, four rebounds, and one block per game. Those stats don't sound great either. <laughs> but that was only in 12 minutes per game. That is insane that he only played 12 minutes per game. So, but he's a great size, big man. He can shoot the three very well, has great form, great bounce. He's athletic and can shoot. He plays great with the pick and roll, great alley-oop catcher. He has good touch inside in the paint. He can be a really, really good prospect. He's a good spot-up shooter. I'm impressed with his shooting at the combine. He impressed everyone with his shooting at the combine. And, you know, that's where his name really got out there. And everyone was like, whoa, who's this guy? He has a nice post-up game. And he still can improve to make it better. He's a good rebounder. But will it translate against better competition? That's the question that all these guys have. But I think he can. You know, he may need some time as well, just like the rest of the international prospects. But Carlo Matkovich is definitely a hidden gem. And like I said, I wonder if he got a call after he withdrew to bring him back in this draft, or if it was just like he changed his mind. We will see, but he definitely should be drafted, in my opinion. If I'm an NBA team, I will be selecting Carlo Matkovich in this draft. Now, my number six international prospect. A lot of you are probably like, man, he's saying a lot of guys I haven't heard before. Where is this guy? Where is this guy? Well, here's the guy that you've heard before, and he's uh, thought of very highly by a lot of people but for me I don't see it as much as others <laughs> let's just say that um, Jan Montero or Jean, Jean Montero I'm pretty sure it's Jean Montero from Overtime Elite you know the 6'2 guard 19 years old he had the 6'4 wingspan you know uh, he averaged his stats, I don't know if they're correct. Um, what I've seen is like two points per game, and that's that's not right. So for the overtime elite, you know, he had a game. His first game, he scored 41 points. So I don't have the exact stats, but he's a 
He has a great handle, great speed. He's able to get to the rack whenever he wants. He can shoot the three very well. He's an electric passer, flashy and effective. Scored 41 points, like I said, in his first overtime elite game. You know, he's a good point guard, but I think he'll need time to develop in the G League. Hopefully he doesn't get lost there. You know, if you want to make an international comparison, could he be Patty Mills? Probably. Um, you know, but he plays under control, but he does throw up some wild shots out there. You know, he looks small on the court compared to the other players with his height and weight, but he does fearlessly attack the rim. But honestly, he's just too small and thin to really be effective to do that in the NBA. He had issues doing that in overtime elite. So, you know, it's going to be a whole nother mountain to climb in the NBA. So we will see. But Jan Montero, I think if he was taller, obviously, that would help him out. Um, but he's 6'2", maybe 6'3". And his game is not polished. It's not perfect. So he's going to have quite the road to go. So I don't see why he would be anywhere near the first round at all. You know, it's weird that you can't find the stats anywhere either. I was trying to find it just now. Nothing. So... <laughs> But now, my number seven prospect is a guy I had rated highly last year, but his season was kind of blown up by COVID and all of that. But Maker, Maker, the 6'11 center from Sydney, last year he played, the year before he played um, at uh, Howard uh, HBCU to try to encourage other African-Americans and African players to go to HBCUs. He played two games there. It did not work out. He got injured, was not able to finish the season. But even if he would have been, the team was only able to play five games and then the season was shut down. So it was a disaster, no fault of his own. So this year he came back, played internationally for Sydney, came off the bench because, like, like I said, it's hard to start internationally. But from the skill that he has, he has a really good handle. I mean, he can dribble the ball up court the full length of the court he's very fast you know for a center he has a really good shot he moves great he can dribble the ball and get his own shot he can post up get his own shot he has great post moves and he can even shoot the three shoots the three very well he has great vision as a passer makes great passes in the paint can hit the step back j tremendous length with his height and long arms and he moves his feet incredibly well for a man his size. He can even stay with guards defensively. So maker, maker, that some of those stats attributes sound like Chet Holmgren, you know, other big guys that you may have been impressed with in this draft. So, I mean, his defense is not Chet Holmgren defense, but we know that maker, maker can move his feet well, block shots, has that super long wingspan, I don't see why he's 60 spots apart from Chet. You know, I think he's had a tough time of it. He's had a couple injuries here and there. Like I said, the season got shut down. But if you see him in a combine workout, you're going to like what you see with Maker or Maker. So we will see if he gets a shot this year or if he has to play internationally or not. But Maker or Maker, he's probably one of the most talented big men you'll ever see play basketball <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to oversell it, but then that and that that doesn't mean it's going to work out. But I mean, the talent is there. So now, number eight, going to go with Ishmael Kamagate, the six eleven center from France, 230 pounds, he's 21 years old, averaged 11.4 points, six boards, 0.7 assists, 0.7 steals, and one and a half blocks per game. He is a very tall, skinny center. I feel he needs more time to develop, but he moves well on offense and defense. He does have some skill. He's not just a blocker and a dunker, but he does have those long arms, great for blocks and for some tough shots in the paint. You know, he has a very slight frame. Even though he's 230, he looks like he's 200 pounds out there. But you just have to wonder about competition as well. But he does have a bit of a jump shot, and he has that baby hook shot in his game. He is a great lob threat and cutter to the rim and gets to the basket easily. If he lands on the right team, has the right point guard, he can turn into something. 
but I do think he still needs time to develop. But his tape is pretty good. You know, once you get to the number eight, nine, ten, and on, you you're trying to find traits that you can use and develop in players. You know, not a lot of these guys are gonna flourish, but they can find a role. So Ismail Kamagate from France, number eight. Now, number nine on my inter- my top international prospects is Khalifia Tiap, the seven foot center from Gran Canaria, and that's in the Euro League, average six points, three and a half boards, and that was in 15 minutes per game. And that's a trait you're seeing, you know, seven footer, <laughs> played internationally, is international, play 15 minutes a game, play 10 minutes a game, 20 minutes per game. They are not getting a ton of minutes. So if those minutes were doubled, the stats are doubled for the most part, and they would look like a lot better prospects. So all you have to do is, you know, take everything you see, take the best of it, engage what you think it can be with more minutes and more development. Khalifa Diop is a good cutter and finisher at the rim. Great shot blocker. He swats everything in his vicinity. You know, he's a seven footer, but he's not stiff. You know, he's a good runner up and down the court. His size fits his play. And, you know, like I said, Ismail Kamagate was 230. Khalifa Diop is 250. So that fits him a lot better. And, you know, he's not going to get bullied in the paint. But he can hit some jump shots. Uh, You know, he's becoming a better shooter. And increasing his range is very necessary for him to flourish in the NBA. It could help him stick with the team because he runs the floor so well. So if you have the space for him, Khalifa Diop is definitely a draftable player, in my opinion, because he doesn't need much more to be ready to play now. So we will see what happens. I wish he would have played more minutes, but Khalifa Diop, my number nine player. And that's, you know, he could, he could be seven, eight, nine. They're all kind of crap shoots. He could be number seven. He could be number six. It just depends on where he lands and the opportunity he's given. But I like Khalifa Diop. And for my last and final prospect, my 10th rated international prospect, that is Leonardo Okiki. He averaged nine and a half points per game, seven and a half boards, a little over one block per game. And that was in 21 minutes per game. He is from Italy. He's 18 years old. He's listed at seven foot, 216 pounds. But watching his film, he looks like he's about six, nine and 260 pounds out there. So I don't know what's right or wrong, but that was very interesting when I saw his tape and then I had to find his measurements. I was like, that doesn't seem right, but what can you do? Now, one of the knocks on his game is he does have a slow release on his shot, but he still gets it off. You know, he can get to his spot, has a soft touch in the paint, decent handle for his size, plays like a 30 year old out there. You know, he plays like a veteran and that's because he plays with veterans, but He doesn't really have the game of a youngster that's raw. He's ready to go now. You know, he has a good jump shot, uses his body well to create shots and create space. You don't see younger guys doing that. And he's 18. So, I mean, that's a lot to look forward to in development. He does throw up some wild shots, though. (laughs) You know, sometimes he's just like determined he's going to shoot that shot. But Leonardo Okiki has some talent and could – make his way onto a team. Uh, he's a good shot blocker as well. So let me go over my top 10 international prospects one more time. So you see the whole list in case you missed anything. Number one, Hugo Besson. Number two, Usman Dieng. Number three, Nikola Jovic. Number four, Gabriel Prasida. Number five, Carlo Matkovic. Number six, John Montero. Number seven, Makur Maker. Number eight, Ismail Kamagate. Number nine, Khalifa Diop. Number 10, Leonardo Okiki. Now, there are some notable players that I left off. And I mean, to me, they just weren't top 10. But they have talent, and they could possibly be drafted as well. And that's Yannick Nsosa, Ibu Dianco Baji, Mateo Spagnolo. Everyone loves Kai Soto. He's not ready yet. Um, And, you know... Like I mentioned with Ziga Samar, 
he um, is returning to play overseas. So those were, uh, you could see Yannick and Sosa getting drafted. You can see Ubu Baji getting drafted, but we will see. But they, they just, a lot of the centers from Africa or of African descent are pretty raw. And, you know, they have the tools, but they need to be developed. So we will see which one is chosen, which, which couple of them are chosen and are able to develop. So, you know, I, I like Ismail Gamakate. He's from France, but Khalifa Diop. Um, but Yannick Sosa and Bubaji could easily, those could be reversed. You know, they all have the same skill set for the most part. It's just a matter of where they land, where they get the opportunity. But from what I saw, I ranked them in order one to 10. All right. So those are my top international prospects. Let me know if you like the list, love the list. Did I leave anybody out? I tried to, you know, cover everything for you. And hopefully there were some guys you hadn't heard of and you can check out their tape as well. If you like the show, the All Rookie Podcast, Give me a follow, like, subscribe, rate, all that good stuff. Tell a friend to tell a friend. I appreciate you all. Until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.